continuing from our previous session on the introduction to the trigeminal nerve and description of the ophthalmic division uh, in this session we shall discuss the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve the maxillary division like the ophthalmic is purely sensory it exits the skull through the foramen rotundum to enter the pterygopalatine fossa and its branches supply the nasal mucosa, the palate, pharynx, upper teeth and skin of the face between the eye and the mouth. The maxillary nerve has several branches starting inside the skull before it exits through the foramen rotundum. It gives off a meningeal branch, uh, more commonly known as the middle meningeal nerve, which supplies dura mater in the middle cranial fossa. Leaving the foramen rotundum, the maxillary nerve enters the pterygopalatine fossa, where it's closely associated with the pterygopalatine ganglion, one of the four parasympathetic ganglia in the head and neck region. And within the pterygopalatine fossa, the maxillary nerve gives off a zygomatic branch, the posterior superior alveolar nerve and several ganglionic branches. It then enters the floor of the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure and gives off anterior and middle superior alveolar nerves uh, whilst traveling in the infraorbital canal. These nerves the anterior and middle superior alveolar nerves supply the anterior teeth as well as the premolars and the mesiobuccal root of the upper six finally the nerve terminates by exiting through the infraorbital foramen on the face and the terminal branches of the maxillary nerve include the palpebral the lateral nasal and the superior labial branches and we shall discuss each of these in bit more detail in the following slides. So this image shows the main branches of the maxillary nerve. So after exiting the foramen rotundum, the maxillary nerve enters the pterygopalatine fossa, where it's closely associated with the pterygopalatine ganglion through two connecting branches. The main trunk of the maxillary nerve within the pterygopalatine fossa gives off the zygomatic nerve which divides into zygomaticotemporal and zygomaticofacial. Now on this image the communicating branch to the lacrimal nerve carrying postganglionic parasympathetic fibers seems to be shown as emerging from the main trunk but more commonly it emerges from the zygomaticotemporal nerve because it's closer to the suprolateral aspect of the orbit and uh, can communicate with the lacrimal branch of the ophthalmic. Also given off within the pterygopalatine fossa is the posterior superior alveolar nerve and then several branches known as the ganglionic branches also emerge through the pterygopalatine ganglion but these are all branches of the maxillary nerve itself and include the greater and lesser palatine nerves the nasal branches, the pharyngeal branches and the orbital branches. Then the main trunk of the maxillary nerve enters the floor of the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure where it travels in a canal known as the infraorbital canal. Whilst traveling inside the infraorbital canal, it gives off the anterior and middle superior alveolar nerves which descend along the anterior wall of the maxillary antrum supply the maxillary antrum and then provide innovation to the incisors, canines, premolars and the mesiobuccal root of the upper six. Whereas the posterior superior alveolar nerve provides innovation to the maxillary molars excluding the mesiobuccal root of the upper six. Finally, the maxillary nerve which is now best known as the infraorbital nerve emerges through the infraorbital foramen in the maxilla and terminates on the face by dividing into palpebral, lateral nasal and superior nasal branches. At this point it would be appropriate to discuss the pterygopalatine fossa 
which is a blind fossa located between the posterior aspect of the maxilla and the pterygoid plates. So laterally it's marked by the pterygomaxillary fissure and this fossa uh, is related superiorly to the foramen rotundum through which the main trunk of the maxillary nerve enters the uh, pterygopalatine fossa itself and posteriorly is the pterygoid canal through which the greater petrosal branch of the facial which has joined the deep petrosal branch from the sympathetic plexus is transmitted as the nerve of the pterygoid canal and carries preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the pterygopalatine ganglion. Also posteriorly is the palatovaginal canal which through which the pterygopalatine fossa communicates with the nasal cavity and the nasopharynx. Anteriorly is the orbit and through the inferior orbital fissure the pterygopalatine fossa communicates with the orbit. Medially is the sphenopalatine foramen through which the pterygopalatine fossa communicates with the nasal cavity. Laterally is the pterygomaxillary fissure which leads into the infratemporal fossa and inferiorly is the greater palatine canal through which the pterygopalatine fossa communicates with the uh, oral cavity and the uh, soft palate area. Closely related to the maxillary nerve within the pterygopalatine fossa is the pterygopalatine ganglion and this is the largest of the peripheral parasympathetic ganglia in the head and neck region also known as ganglion of Meckel. The parasympathetic root originates in the lacrimatory nucleus in the lower pons, nervous intermediate branch of the facial, greater petrosal which joins with the deep petrosal branch from the sympathetic plexus to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal and these fibers enter the pterygopalatine ganglion and are distributed through the ganglionic branches of the maxillary nerve firstly to the lacrimal gland via the zygomatic or temporal branch which communicates with the lacrimal branch of the ophthalmic to provide scretomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland and through the palatine pharyngeal and nasal branches to mucosal glands in these areas. So this image depicts the scretomotor parasympathetic fibers uh, which are distributed through the ganglionic branches of the maxillary nerve originating in the lacrimatory and superior salivatory nuclei, nervous intermedius, greater petrosal branch of the facial nerve which joins with the deep petrosal nerve uh, carrying sympathetic fibers from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal which enters the posterior aspect of the pterygopalatine fossa and then these preganglionic fibers reach the pterygopalatine ganglion and are distributed through the branches of the maxillary nerve. The scretomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland through the zygomaticotemporal branch which joins the lacrimal nerve of the ophthalmic division and then the mucosal and minor salivary glands in the palate, uh, pharyngeal area, the nasal glands and the orbital glands they are also innervated through the ganglionic branches of the maxillary nerve. One of the main branches of the maxillary nerve within the pterygopalatine fossa is the zygomatic branch arises in the pterygopalatine fossa, enters the zygomatic bone and divides into two branches. The zygomatic facial which provides innervation to the general sensory innervation to the skin over the prominence of the cheek and the zygomatic temporal which we've discussed several times carries scretomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland and also supplies the skin over the zygomatic arch which is the hairless skin of the temple and carries postganglionic scretomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland 
uh, before it enters the zygomatic bone. Now we can look at the dental branches of the maxillary nerve starting within the pterygopalatine fossa. The posterior superior alveolar nerve branches from the main trunk of the maxillary nerve descends along the posterior wall of the maxillary tuberosity to provide innervation to the uh, pulps of the maxillary molars excluding the mesiobuccal root of the upper six. The buccal bone related to the uh, maxillary molars, the buccal periosteum and the buccal soft tissues related to the maxillary molars along with the innervation to the maxillary sinus. The main trunk of the maxillary nerve then travels in the uh, floor of the orbit by entering the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure and then traveling in a canal within the floor of the orbit, the infraorbital canal and there it gives off a branch known as the anterior superior alveolar nerve. Sometimes there are separate anterior and middle superior alveolar nerves and these descend along the anterior wall of the maxillary antrum and provide innervation to the incisors, canines, premolars and the mesiobuccal root of the upper six. The labiobuccal bone related to these teeth, the adjacent periosteum and the labial and buccal soft tissues related to the incisors, canines and the premolars. So this image depicts the dental branches of the maxillary nerve, the posterior superior alveolar branch and then the middle and the anterior superior alveolar branches which provide innovation to the entire dentition in the maxilla. Finally, the infraorbital nerve emerges on the face through the infraorbital foramen and is distributed in three groups of branches. The palpebral branches supply the skin of the lower eyelid and the conjunctiva. The nasal branches provide innovation to the skin along the external nose and the labial branches provide innovation to the skin and mucous membrane of the upper lip and the adjacent gingivae. So this image depicts some of the branches of the maxillary nerve including the infraorbital nerve which is the termination of the maxillary nerve and includes the palpebral, nasal and superior labial branches, the zygomaticofacial and zygomaticotemporal branches and then you can also see some branches of the frontal division of the ophthalmic, the supratrochlear, supraorbital and the infratrochlear branch of the nasociliary division of the ophthalmic nerve. And lastly we can look at some of the ganglionic branches of the maxillary nerve. There are basically four groups of ganglionic branches the nasal branches, the palatine, the pharyngeal and the orbital. Uh, amongst the nasal branches, one of the most recognized one is the nasopalatine or the incisive nerve which provides innovation to the palatal soft tissues related to the incisors and canines. And then you also have the posterior superior nasal branches which provide innovation to the mucosa uh, in the interior of the nasal cavity. The palatine branches include the greater and lesser palatine branches and then also pharyngeal and orbital branches. These images show the distribution of the ganglionic branches of the maxillary nerve on the palate. Starting anteriorly you've got the incisive foramen in the midline on the palatal aspect of the maxillary incisors and it is marked there by a soft tissue projection known as the incisive papilla and the incisive nerve is basically one of the nasal branches of the uh, ganglionic divisions of the maxillary nerve and provides innovation to the palatal soft tissues related to the incisors and canines. However, it does not in innovate the teeth. Then you have the greater palatine branches which emerge on the palate through the greater palatine foramen located on the distal aspect of the maxillary second molar and the greater palatine nerves provide innovation to the uh, palatal soft tissues related to 
the molars and premolars in the maxilla and finally the lesser palatine nerves emerge through the lesser palatine foramina and provide innovation to the soft tissues of the soft palate and the evula so in summary the maxillary nerve is purely sensory and provides innovation to the middle third of the face including the maxilla the bone periosteum teeth and soft tissues the palate including the bone and the soft tissues the maxillary sinus the upper lip and the cheek and also provides branches to the nose orbit and pharynx in addition to its own fibers the maxillary nerve carries postganglionic skeletomotor fibers from the greater petrosal branch of the facial via the pterygopalatine ganglion to provide skeletomotor innervation to the lacrimal gland via the zygomatico temporal branch and to mucosal glands on the palate pharynx and nose via the ganglionic branches and these are two of the recommended textbooks for further reading anatomy for dental students by johnson and moore and netter's head and neck anatomy for dentistry thank you